Hello students, in this video we'll compute the first and second fundamental forms of surfaces of revolution. Let's be given a curve, gamma, contained in the xz plane. Okay. And so here's our configuration, here's the x-axis, here's the z-axis, the x-axis, there's the z-axis, and here's the y-axis. And so I'm going to be given a profile in the xz plane. Well, some curve like this. There's my curve gamma. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this curve around the z-axis, right? So we're going to get another profile like this later on. Just going to rotate all the points on the surface and get a surface revolution like that. Okay. And so what we're going to get, so this curve is going to be parameterized in the following way. So gamma of u is going to be some function f of u and then zero and then g of u. That's my parameterization of the surface. And then we're going to rotate this curve around the z-axis and rotate this around the z-axis. And we rotate around the z-axis, that means that the z-component is going to be fixed, right? So your z-component is fixed. And then the x and y-components move around the circle. Of radius f of u. Okay, excellent. And so that gives us our parameterization of the surface. So therefore our surface is parameterized in the following way as R of U and V is going to be F of U cosine V, F of U sine V. And if you don't like this parameterization, you can flip the sine and the cosine that's gonna reverse the orientation of the rotation, right? If you don't like the f of g configuration, you can invert it and then basically symmetrize over the z-axis. There's going to be lots of sort of modifications that are going to change the first, and in the first fundamental form and second fundamental form and normal vector up to a plus minus sign, right? So the normal vector in, for, in second fundamental form might change by a negative sign depending on the choice of angle parameterization. And then finally, g of u. And furthermore, let's put the, um, this curve into arc length parameter. All right, what does that mean? It means norm of gamma is equal to one, excuse me. All right, let's do some calculations. So what's R U going to be? R U is going to be F prime of U cosine of V. F prime of U sine of V and then g prime of u. What's my rv going to be? It's going to be negative f of u sine v, f of u cosine v, and then zero, right? Because there's no v in the last slot. And so now we can do the first fundamental form, right? So let's do that. So what's the first fundamental form going to be? The first fundamental form is going to be ru dot ru of an f prime squared cosine squared, f prime squared sine squared plus g prime squared. So this is going to be an f prime of u squared times the quantity cosine squared plus sine squared plus g prime squared. That's my du squared terms. Then du dot ru dot rv is equal to zero, so I have plus zero du dv, plus rv dot rv is f squared sine squared, f squared cosine squared. So it's going to be f squared u sine squared v plus cosine squared v dv squared. That's, of course, a squared up there. So what does our first fundamental form simplify to? Our first fundamental form is going to simplify to what? Let's check it out. So it's going to be just 
f prime plus g prime, well, it's an arc length parameter, so this is going to be equal to 1. So this is going to be just a du squared plus 0 du dv plus just an f of u squared, f of u squared dv squared. This type of a fundamental form occurs all the time, so it's a very important class of first fundamental forms. Excellent. Let's do the second fundamental form. So I'm going to need a couple of second derivatives now, right? And then the normal vector, right? So what's r u u going to be? r u u is going to be f double prime. Co I'm going to suppress the u. Cosine v. f double prime sine v. And then g double prime. What's my RUV going to be? That's going to be a negative F prime sine V, then an F prime cosine V, then a zero. What's my RVV going to be? My RVV is going to be a negative F cosine theta, a negative F sine theta, or V in this case, and then a zero, like that. Good. And what's my normal vector over here, my unit normal vector? So let's do RU cross RV. So what's RU cross RV going to be? So RU cross RV is going to be the determinant of I, J, and K. And then what? Then F prime cosine. I'm going to write that as just F prime C. F prime S for sine. And then G prime. And then negative f s, f c, and then zero. So let's do the cross product and see what we're going to get. So hence, r u cross r v is going to be equal to what? The i component is going to be, um, what's the i component going to be? Let's see. The i component is going to be, that's my f, that's my r, g prime, that's my r, v, good, 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 good. The i component is going to be what? Is going to be a, right over here, just this negative g prime f cosine, negative g prime f cosine v. What is my j component going to be? My j component is going to be, again, so I'll have an negative, 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 right? And so that's going to be a negative g prime f sine v. And then finally, the k component is going to be an f prime cosine squared plus f prime sine squared. So that's going to be an f, f prime like that. Great. Now, what's the length of this vector? The length of this vector is going to be what? Is going to be G prime f g prime f squared cosine squared plus sine squared so is going to be a g prime f squared right plus f f prime squared square rooted, which is going to be what? Well, this is going to be f squared then f prime squared plus g prime squared. Well, that's equal to one, so it's just going to be equal to f over here. So what's our unit normal vector going to be? So our unit normal vector, so our n hat is going to be this vector over here divided by f. So it's going to be a negative g prime of u cosine of v, then a negative g prime of u sine of v, then an f prime of u like that. Beautiful. Now what's our second fundamental form? So our second fundamental form, we're going to have to do all these dot products. So my 2 is really r u u dot n hat du squared plus 2 r u v dot n hat d u d v plus r v v dot n hat d v squared like so okay great so let's do it so what's r u u dot n hat so let's do r u u dot n hat so i'm going to have a while f double prime g prime cosine squared, and then f double prime g prime sine squared, and they're both negative, right? So that term over there is going to give me a what? That'll give me an, an f double prime of u, g prime of u, 
And then the last term is going to be a plus g double prime f, plus g double prime of u, f prime of u. That's my du squared terms over there. What's ruv dot n hat? Well, I'm going to have a positive f prime g prime sine cosine, and then a negative f prime g prime sine cosine. Those cancel, and then a zero f prime, so there's no cross terms over here. Now, what's rvv dot the normal vector? So it's going to be a positive f g prime, then a positive f g prime cosine squared plus sine squared. So that's going to be a positive f g prime. So we'll get that term over here. We'll get an f times, let's be very careful. So we'll get an f g prime positive and f g prime positive cosine squared plus sine squared. So I'll have a g prime f. So I have a g prime. So I'll have a f g prime. So it's going to be f of u g prime of u. And then that's going to be a dv squared term over here. Okay? Excellent. So that's our second fundamental form of the surface of revolution. Now that we have these two fundamental forms, we're going to see, now we can think about some very special cases, right? We know that cones are surfaces of revolution. We know that cylinders are surfaces of revolution. We know that spheres are surfaces of revolutions. Hyperboloids of one sheet can be thought of as surfaces of revolution, right? So we have all sorts of different configurations that are surfaces of revolution. So these formulas for first and second fundamental forms give us access to, if we parameterize in the correct way, computing first and second fundamental forms of common surfaces very quickly. And furthermore, we'll see in further videos that the, these first and second fundamental forms put into matrix form will allow us to compute mean curvatures and Gaussian curvatures and sectional curvatures extremely quickly. So having these formulas for surfaces revolution in the back of our heads will, will allow us to compute Gaussian curvatures and sectional curvatures and mean curvatures very quickly in the future. Thank you very much.